Scientists use many different ways to measure how far away objects in space are from one another. Two we're going to learn about today are astronomical unit, which is the distance from the Earth to the Sun. The other one we're going to learn about is a light year, and that measures the distance it takes for light to travel in one year. One light year is equal to 63,240 AU. Light year measures distance. It does not measure time. So it's the distance light travels in one year. It'd be like if lights had a starting line, and you said go, and then start traveling. One year later, however far that light travels, that would be equal to one light year. So the distance from the start line to where it ended in that one year race is a light year. So, since we know a light year is how far light can travel in one year, we can that affects how long it takes the light to get to us, because the stars are so far apart. So, if the sun puts off light, that light can travel, and travels one year and it would make it this far, two years and it would make it that far, three years, four years, five years before it made it to this other star. And so that other star is five light years away. So how many AU is five light years if one light year is equal to 63,240 AU? Well, you would just take those two numbers and multiply them together. So you would take five times 63,240. Okay, now go ahead and do your practice problem in your notes. Uh, looking into our past, if the aliens were looking at Earth from 65 million light, ye light years away, what would they see? Well, they would see the Earth as it was 65 million years ago, because the light that left Earth was then, 65 million years ago, would just be reaching that other planet. So they wouldn't see us. We wouldn't be here. They would see dinosaurs or something like that. Okay, so they'd be seeing the Earth as it was 65 million years ago. So when we look at exoplanets and stuff that's not in our solar system that's far away, we see it as it was in the past not how it is now. So here's Earth, and here we've been sending TV signals for quite some time. And you can see that our TV signals go out into space, and then these are our closest stars. So for us, we've been sending out these signals, so only the um, only the planets around these stars have received our signals. So even if we've sent our very first signal, it hasn't made it to that many stars yet in our galaxy. And so you can see the different uh, things like this star up here hasn't even, our uh, TV waves haven't even reached it yet. So they haven't seen the first baseball game or anything like that. How do we find these distances? Um, we use parallax, which is where um, you use two different vantage points, 
And so um, to figure out how far away everything is. So we call this depth perception. And that's why we have two eyes. So that way we have two vantage points and we can tell how far away uh, objects are. That star is 25 light years away. That one's 400. But how do we know that? It seems like measuring distances to stars should be impossible. It's not like we can stretch out a cosmic tape measure from here to Aldebaran, a giant red star that's over 400 trillion miles away. Fortunately, we've got triangles. Try this. Shift to the left, then to the right. Everything in front of you appears to move back and forth. But objects that are farther away move less than stuff that's nearby. This effect is called parallax, and we can use it to measure large distances. As our planet goes around the sun, the stars appear to shift back and forth relative to more distant stars. The farther away a star is, the less it moves. This shifting is incredibly tiny. The closest star to our sun wobbles no more than the width of a soccer ball seen from 40 miles away. By looking at a star in January, and then again in July, we can draw a triangle. The base is the diameter of Earth's orbit. And the opposite angle is how far the star appears to shift. Dig up some high school trigonometry, and you can calculate the triangle's height, which, in this case, is the distance to the star. Knowing these distances lets us measure other things, like the brightness of stars or the size of galaxies. In fact, measuring parallax lets us map out the entire universe. It's so essential that the European Space Agency has developed a telescope called Gaia. Its mission is to measure parallax with more precision than we've ever seen. Above the turbulence of Earth's atmosphere, Gaia will make a three-dimensional map of over a billion stars all the way to the core of our galaxy, roughly 30,000 light years away. All of that from the lowly triangle. For Scientific American's Instant Egghead, I'm Christopher Crockett. How do you find these distant stars? Well, if you hold up a finger and cover up an object uh, and close one, close one eye, then cover up the object, then you're going to open that eye and close the other one. So you're going to see how it shifts from one direction to the other. And your brain uses that information to make a 3D image in your mind. So this is um, in your notes again. So the sun is about eight light minutes away. So a light minute is how far light can travel in one minute. So one, eight light minutes is also one AU. So if the sun were to explode or suddenly disappear or something like that, we wouldn't know about it for eight minutes. Alpha Centauri is the nearest star to us, and it's 4.3 light years away. So if Alpha Centauri exploded or disappeared or did something, then we would know about it for 4.3 years. Now, if the sun was the size of a tennis ball, the Earth would be a little bit smaller than a grain of sand, and we would be 19 feet away from the sun. Alpha Centauri would be a lot further away. It would be 890 miles away. That's like going from Chicago to Boston, or maybe from going like Springfield to um, the mountains, the Rocky Mountains, or something like that. So that's how far away Alpha Centauri is. The, the Earth would be 19 feet away from the sun if it was the size of a tennis ball, but Alpha Centauri would be way over uh, in the Rocky Mountains. And the sun's a whole lot bigger than a tennis ball. So we're going to look at some stars, different sizes. Seen from Earth, 
Our sun is a blinding ball of light. But take away the glare, and one of the most powerful objects in the universe appears in our own backyard. It's a ball of superheated gas that's been lighting our solar system for 4.6 billion years and dominates all life on Earth. The sun is 93 million miles away, and that means in actuality it's immense could fit a million Earths inside the sun. It's nearly a million miles in diameter, yet our sun is tiny compared to the really big stars out there. Eta Carinae, over five million times larger than our sun. Betelgeuse, 300 times larger than Eta Carinae. If it was our sun, it would reach as far out as Jupiter. And then there's this monster, V.Y. Canis Majoris, the largest star ever discovered, a billion times bigger than our sun. So here's a picture of the Milky Way galaxy, and all those little dots in there are stars. But how do they look, uh, why do they look different from each other? Uh, the first one is the star size. As we just saw from that video, the size can vary quite a bit. How far away from Earth? Okay, so where we're looking at them from. And the last one is brightness, which a lot of time has, has to do with the temperature of the star. <clears throat> There's two types of brightness. There's apparent brightness and absolute brightness. Appar apparent brightness is how bright a star is when viewed from Earth. Okay, so if you're standing on Earth, and you're looking, then which one appears to be the brightest? Okay, so now I want you guys to think about which star has the most apparent brightness. Which one appears to be the brightest star of them all? And then think about why do all other stars have a lower apparent brightness? So I'm getting ready to say the answer, so if you haven't thought of one yet, then go ahead and pause the video. So the star with the most apparent brightness is the sun because it blocks out all other stars during the day. You can't even see any others because it's so bright. Okay, And then all the other stars have a lower apparent brightness, not because it's the biggest, because we just saw in that video that it's actually kind of small. Uh, it's the closest, and that's why. It's the only star in our solar system. Absolute brightness is how bright a star would be when viewed from the same distance as the sun from Earth. So if you lined up all the stars in a line the same exact distance away, that would be absolute brightness. So that way they're all at the same distance. So from that video, which one would have the most absolute brightness? <laughs> 